Namaste and welcome to the learning series of English Suit. Dear students, taking care of you, English Hood is presenting a regular series of lessons. Uh, we have already presented three lessons from the Heritage of Words, one, two, three units, and today we are going to talk with the meanings in words unit one. Unit one, experience, 1.1, experiences and achievements. This exercise reviews the language used to describe experiences and achievements. And we are learning to use the present perfect and past simple tenses for talking about experience and achievements up to now. Experience refers to what you have done till this time. Achievement refers to what you have got or what you have achieved till this moment. Therefore, experiences and achievements are the things, skills, knowledge, or etc or activities that you have done, seen, received till now. So, you can express your experiences and achievements by saying, I have passed grade 11, I passed the examination of grade 11 last year, or I have read many books, I read Harry Potter two months ago, or I have received many awards. I received gold medal in province level essay competition in 2018. In both the cases, uh, we have used first present perfect tense and second time past simple tense. Thus, you can see the use of present perfect and past simple to talk about the experience and achievement. Now, uh, let's uh, see the structure of present perfect tense. Present perfect tense uh, can be expressed in the form of subject plus has a plus verb three and other necessary complement. Uh, for example, I have visited many places. So present perfect tense is used without reference of time. There's no any reference of time here. Whereas past simple tense, the structure is subject plus verb to plus object or object complement. I visited Mustang last month. For example, visited Mustang has been used with the last month as the time reference. Now we are discussing exercise 1.2. You can refer the book, or it is also the same case with the workbook exercise number one. Uh, for example, look at this example number one. Julia has had an amazingly successful film career. Now you have to list uh, experiences, achievements. The hidden question for this um, question is why Julia has had a very successful film career? Or you ask the question how she has had a very successful film career? Or what has she done? And what did she do? So this is the hidden question you have to answer by using present perfect and past simple tense. So for example, we can go like this. Julia has had an amazingly successful film career because she has played in a number of films, which is present perfect tense. She played her hit film in 2017, past simple tense with the time reference. Similarly, we can also say, she has received many film awards Present perfect tense. She got Best Cine Actress Award, Film Award of 2018. Similarly, we can also list other experiences and achievements like she has directed some films too. Uh, present perfect tense. She directed My Mission last year, and so on. So you can practice with a quill my using both present perfect tense and simple past tense simultaneously 
to do such kinds of exercises. Now the next exercise is 1.3, have you ever? So this exercise practices three types of questions using have you ever? You can refer the book. Uh, now we can use present perfect tense for asking and past tense for giving details of the experiences. Structure number one. Have you ever eaten Japanese food? The structure is have you ever plus verb three plus object complement. This structure is used when you do the action yourself. When you are doing the action yourself, we use have you ever plus verb three. Example, have you ever played cricket? Because it's an action you have done yourself or you can do yourself or you might be doing yourself. Similarly, question A, have you ever visited the Rar Square Museum? And B can answer, no, but I have visited Hanuman Doka Museum. I went there last Saturday. This I went there last Saturday is the detail of the experience in past simple tense. Or you can also answer by saying, ah, yes, I have visited it. I visited Hanuman Daga last Saturday. So next structure with have you ever is, have you ever been shouted at? Structurally, have you ever been plus verb three and other necessary complement. This structure is used when action happens upon you. That means shouted at you, laughed at you, etc. Example, have you ever been punished for misconduct? Because this is the action that happens upon you. So similarly, next example, question A may ask you, have you ever been trapped in a lift? So B might answer, no, but I have been trapped in toilet. I was locked in by my sister last Friday. Or you can say, yes, I have been trapped in the lift twice. Lastly, I was trapped in WTO lift last week. The next structure with have you ever is, have you ever had your plus something plus verb three and other necessary um, supplement? Students need to drill and remember these given three structures. Uh, this now third one is, have you ever had your bike stolen? So have you ever had plus noun phrase plus verb three? So, this structure is used when the action happens upon your belongings. That means when the action happens upon your things or upon your parts of the body. And noun phrase here refers to uh, your bike. So, bike is noun. And something associated, connected, okay, some words that are used with the noun is noun phrase. Here, your bike is noun phrase. Example, have you ever had your, have you ever had your house broken into? It's event that happened to your belonging. All right, that means it happens upon your house. So, you use this structure, have you ever had your plus noun phrase plus verb three. The question is, have you ever had your arm twisted? No, but I have had my ear pulled. My mother pulled my ear yesterday. Or you can say, yes, I have had my arm twisted. My friend twisted my arm in phone yesterday. Now we are uh, discussing some of the sample answers based on 1.3. And you can also refer workbook exercise number two. For example, if the question is still wallet, now you have to decide, have you ever done it? 
yourself or have you ever had been done it action happened upon you or have you ever had your something happened or action happened upon you upon your thing obviously you haven't stolen the wallet but if you have done you can also say have you ever stolen somebody's wallet but i think this is uh, not good all right you didn't steal the wallet but your wallet might have been stolen and therefore uh, you can't use this one and it didn't happen upon you but it happened upon your belongings therefore uh, you need to use the third structure and third structure is have you ever had your wallet stolen no i haven't but i have had my bag stolen somebody took my bag from bus last month when i had been in a tour but this somebody took my bag uh, from bus last month is optional part you may not write in the exam look at another example throw out of class the action happened upon you because you have been thrown out of the class therefore you have to use second structure have you ever been thrown out of the class no but i have been thrown out of the library the library mean threw me out yesterday when i was making noise similarly next exercise visit mustang obviously it is done by you done by yourself so you use structure number one have you ever visited mustang no but i have visited beni i went there last year so the other exercises deciding which structure to use either either one have you ever eaten something two have you ever been punished eight two have you ever had your bike stolen so remember these three structures so next exercise in this unit is 1.5 familiar and unfamiliar experience familiar experience refers to your familiar habit non habit regular habit or you are habituated with the activities or actions unfamiliar experience refers that you are not habituated to the activities or you are not familiar to the activities here we can Describe familiar and unfamiliar experience by using the language item be used to followed by one active gene to passive gene. Here, be verb refers is, am, are in the present form, was, were in the past form, and be, being, been. These are the be verb uh, forms. Here, we are using is m r so in the active gerund uh, we are using the structure subject plus is m r plus used to plus buffer buffer is a gerund gerund means verb plus ing for example cinema is used to going to the parties for familiar activities so that means cinema is habituated Sima is very much familiar going to the parties, right? So next is Sima is not used to cooking curry. So she is not uh, habituated in cooking the curry. So this is how we can express. Next, passive gerund is subject plus is am are plus used to plus being plus part three. Uh, passive means being plus verb four so uh, sorry passive means being plus verb three so uh, here we are using this structure subject for example subject i is m r m used to used to being and verb is laughed so you can say i am used to being laughed at means uh, I am familiar that people are laughing at me but you can also say I am not used to being ignored at that means 
I'm not familiar with the situation that people are ignoring me. Similarly, uh, another uh, Juran form of having something done is subject plus is m r plus used to plus having plus noun phrase plus verb free. For example, they are used to having their room cleaned for familiar experience. That means they are um, used, okay, they are habituated with the activity that someone cleans their room. Uh, now, next one is they are not used to having their bed made. That means they are not familiar with the situation that their bed are made. Perhaps they make themselves. In this way, we can answer the questions related to familiar and unfamiliar experiences using any one of the above language structure. And you have to decide which structure is appropriate one on the basis of the question. For example, some of the questions can be asked in the examination like this. Continue the remark below with a sentence using not used to plus verb ing. Uh, refer workbook exercise number four. For example, question number one, the traffic doesn't wake him up at night. So you have to decide what he is used to or what he is not used to or what he, what he is being familiar to or not being familiar to or what he is familiar with having something done or what he is not familiar with something having done so here the best answer is simply we can use the first structure he is used to sleeping in the street so traffic doesn't wake him up means because he is used to sleeping in the street some other exercises are he is going to find it hard work working on a building site so that means you can say he is not used to working outside so therefore he is going to find it hard working on a building site you can also say he is used to working inside all right so therefore uh, he is going to find it hard working in a building site so you can have choice sometimes similarly number three he won't mind if you stare at him because he is used to being stare at structure number two being plus verb three Question number four. I don't think uh, she has ever opened a door herself. No, you can say she is not used to having her door opened herself. Or she is used to having her door opened by others. So you can have a choice. Look at another example. I'm not surprised he's out of breath. So you can say, he is used to taking rest, instruction number one, for familiar uh, experience. He's not used to running, okay, same structure for unfamiliar. You can also say, he is not used to jogging, he is not used to working, he is not used to playing football. He is not used to doing work, therefore, he is out of breath, means having a lot of, okay, much respiration, is uh, out of breath. Or you can also say structure number two, he is used to being served all the time, therefore, I'm not surprised he's out of breath. So he has been served all the time. Now, when he has to serve himself, then he is out of breath. He is not used to being asked for jogging. So perhaps he was never asked to go for morning walk and therefore when he went to the morning walk, he is out of breath. He is used to having his work done by helpers. So that's where he, um, now he is out of breath because uh, his work 
is to be done by himself. And he is not used to having his work done by himself. Okay, so everything used to be done by others. Okay, so when he has to do the work himself, then he is out of breath. So in this way, depending upon questions, depending upon the sense of the question, you can use all three language structures sometimes. But in the exam, you have to use any one of them. So let me talk to you about other writing exercises. Every unit has reading and writing exercises followed by grammatical, that means language function exercises. So they are given to strengthen the understanding power and to strengthen the language functions that you have learned in the grammar. So basically, writing paragraphs or essays are arranged in such a way that they intend to check, practice the language item that have been discussed, because grammar means to use the language function in communication. So while answering the writing part, make sure you are using the grammatical structures you have learned in the lesson. For example, in this unit, you have learned to list the experiences, you have learned to make the equations with heavy ever, and you have learned to express the familiar and unfamiliar situations, right? So, um, example, in this unit, the paragraph to write about your qualification and experiences to apply for a job might be the questions, okay? So at that time, make sure that you are using the present perfect tense and past simple tense to answer this question. For example, you will be saying, I have passed bachelor's degree in management. I passed C in 2070. I have worked in many restaurants. I worked in Salty Crown Plaza for two years, etc. So whatever qualifications or experiences you have been asked, okay, you have to write in present perfect tense and past simple tense. Similarly, you can be asked other questions like, uh, write a paragraph describing your familiar and unfamiliar experiences as a beggar. So you must be saying, I'm used to giving the donations to the beggar, I'm not used to being asked uh, frequently and I'm used to um, helping the beggars, etc. like that. So paragraph asking are to check if you can use the language structures in your answer. Therefore, make sure in the writing paragraph you have to decide which language functions have been asked in the uh, paragraph okay and you have to decide and you have to write accordingly using these structures that gives you more marks so thank you very much for watching and listening me and i request if you have any queries don't hesitate to ask me in the form of comment at the below and you put down your questions. If you have any questions, I will be answering you. And like, share among your friends. Uh, so you can use the time by watching my videos. I have already given three more lessons from the Heritage of Wars, uh, Wars 2. So, uh, and I'll be giving you more other lessons every day. So, uh, subscribe click the button and then you can get the regular videos so during the corona time stay inside stay healthy but don't forget to feed your mind too and the most important thing is make your mental health very nice namaste and welcome to the learning series of english suit